Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. It's time to upgrade the headlights in my Jeep TJ. Let's get to it. Okay, so these are the headlights. Um, they've got the halos. They've got the colors. Uh, they've got the high and low beams. Uh, comes with all the wiring that you need. It's even got a remote control. And there's an app that you can actually use to change uh, the settings and colors and stuff on the lights. Comes with the wall, like I said, all the wiring, the adapters, and even a fuse uh, adapter that you can use to plug directly into your Jeep fuse box in the engine bay. It's a kit from Super E, and I'm going to try it out and see how well it works. Okay, so what I really like about the Super E kit is that it pretty much can be done with just a number 15 Torx screwdriver. Um, because the wiring is pretty much all encased and enclosed, um, you can just set it up without having to do anything special. Uh, most of the kits that I've seen that have the halo wiring, a lot of the times they will just come with a black and a red wire sticking out. And you end up having to buy wire and run it to the length that you need. And it's just, it's not easy. You know, it requires so much more. So I like being able to just do something fairly simple. Pretty simple to get started. You need to take out this black plastic outer ring. And then there's a metallic inner ring in here. That's second. But with the plastic ring, it's just three screws. One, two up here, and then three right here. Um, pretty simple, and it's a Torx 15. And all we gotta do is just get the screws out. So yeah, once you've got the three out, it's just an easy matter of taking that off. And we've got one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. What you might see over here and back in there, that's actually for adjusting the, uh, where, the, where the beam is pointed. So we're just gonna make sure you take off the Torx bits, screws. There's four right in here that are on the edge of this metal ring. Now the Jeep headlights that came in the TJ are notoriously just not very bright at all. So I mean everybody really should be doing this no matter what you've got or what kind of lights you want or what you what you have going on. It's just a good idea to get rid of those original headlights. All right, and there is our ring. And here is our light. And you just have to unplug that three prong switch, the old light is out. And again, this is what it looks like once you've got the light out. These are your, or for adjusting the angle of the light. You don't wanna take these out, these three here, adjust where that light is pointed. So leave those alone, and we're gonna put the new light in here. We'll do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll get started with the new ones. Next, we wanna get our hood open so we have a little bit better access. So yeah, we're gonna plug in one light over here, one light over here, and let's see how well it fits with the wiring. So with the wiring, it's got, this is what I like about this setup, is normally you just could just plug this in, put it back in and you're done. But if you want the halo wiring, uh, a lot of kits will come with just the, like I said, the black and red wire coming out here and that's it, and you've got to figure out a way to run it over to this light. This kit comes with the entire thing. So what you want to do is look and see where it junctions here at this Y. The shorter side is going to go on this side. The much longer side, and they give you a little way more than you pretty much need, but the longer one is going to go over here. The reason why is because we're going to run the wiring to this box. So we're gonna be mostly on this side. So yeah, you wanna take a look at the lights if you get this kit. And you wanna look for the shortest side because that's gonna go on your passenger side. Longest is gonna go on the driver's side. So to get this through, you don't wanna just stuff the wire in there. So what you can do 
is take it apart. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's two arrows. That way, when you take it apart, there's only one way you'll put it back together again, and that's to match up those two arrows. So our light will go in like this. And here's our original plug that came with the Jeep. Now, I know I said doing it pretty much with just um, the, the Torx screwdriver. What I like to do is put a little bit of dielectric grease down here. And that's going to prevent corrosion. You don't want to cover up the prongs themselves. You're looking to just get on the base the grease set up so that you can, when it plugs in, it's keeping water out. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got the grease on there and then it's going to plug directly in. Now your Jeep can get into a lot of muddy, messy, rainy situations. So I always recommend the grease. And then like I said, we're just going to plug these two in. And there, our headlight is connected and our halo light is running through. Now what we can do is put this back in and then repeat it on the other side. One thing that you may have a question about is where does the headlight go? You want the larger end, there's like a larger circle and a smaller circle. You want the larger circle to be at the bottom. That's your high beam. This is your low beam, so it's aimed more down towards the road. The high beam is aimed up higher, of course, so that you can see a little bit better in pitch black darkness. So make sure that the bigger circle is at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put the ring back on, put the trim piece back on, and then I'll go over and do the other side as well. The tricky thing with putting your ring back in is the ring is at different spots. So you sort of have to put it on, turn it around and twist it until you get these to all line up with the holes. And the cool thing is, is the holes themselves are slotted, so you don't want to tighten it up. You want to put it on, put a screw in on each hole, then still slowly starting to tighten it up once you've got them all started. Once again, I'm just putting them in, getting them started, and then I will tighten it down after I'm sure that the light is in a good position. There, got them all in. Now I'm going to just, just tighten them down. It's in a good spot. It's in nice and tight. You want to line up the holes. Light it back in. And then reinstall your screws again. And we got our ring started. Just uh, two more to go and we're good. All right, so this side is back on. New light installed. The larger high beams still down at the bottom. Everything's good to go over here. Just stay. Stay. Good. Stay there. All right, let's find our line. Uh... All right, we've got our 
passenger side headlight in and it's a little off again make sure you got it lined up straight i do not have it straight there we go got it lined up and tightened down so let's move to the inside for the rest of our wiring oh gotta put the ring on too our ring is back on nice and tight and that's it we just pull up our wire line up our arrows and there we go now where to run this hmm okay so i cheated a little bit I took out one of my grill pieces, I'm moving this out of the way, and then what I'm going to do is run my light wire in through here. That way I can run the wire all the way down along the grill, and it won't be too close to the uh, condenser or the radiator or anything like that. Because I've got a lot of extra wire, and then I'll use some zip ties and hold it down. You can kind of see it here. I've got it coming in from around that. And then I've got enough room now to plug it back in. So I've got my wire fed down in this side. So you can see I've got the wide junction here. Fed that wire all the way down. And then what I'm gonna do is zip tie it to these steel rods that are in here. That'll keep it nice and protected and should be good to go. Okay, we've got our arrows matched up. And that light is connected. Okay, so I've got my wiring run back to here. This little box I'm going to attach right here, fits in snug perfectly, and I've got my wire run from that over to here. What I'm going to do is attach my negative to the negative post on the battery cable, and my positive is going to go in here. Now. Um, your TJ may be different than mine. I do not have any other open fuses on this side. Everything on this side is pretty much constantly hot, which means there's power to it no matter what. Now, what I do recommend you doing is take a voltmeter and check everything out. Here, I'll show you. So, just as an example, uh, it's going to be hard to do with one hand. Let's set you up here. So you put your lead on the negative cable. You put your red on the positive, which is the left-hand side of the fuse. So there, I've got a reading of 12.5 when I'm on this fuse, when I'm on this fuse, when I'm on this fuse. So these are always on. The keys are not in the car right now. Now this one is my fuel injector. And as you can see right now, I'm getting a zero reading. This one is my horn and I'm getting 12.3. So that means it's always on again. So all of these, except for the injector, and there is nothing else in any of these, all of them are always hot, which means that my lights would stay on no matter what. So the only option I have is the injector. I really don't want to do this, but it's the only choice I have other than running it inside. Now, what you can do is take your glove box door off, run your wires all the way through the firewall, 
and then tap into one of the fuses here that's pretty much only on whenever the ignition is on and or maybe even when your headlights are on so if you had an instrument panel or a gauge light fuse in here you could hook up to that one and the best way to know is to sort of look at your look down in here on, on the list and you can do that you can run it all the way in here tap into here i just don't want to do that right now like i said i really don't want to tap into the injector fuse but if i do it correctly with the fuse tap it's not going to take away from anything that's operating the fuel injectors and it's only going to be on when the engine is on so when i start the car the power will go to the through the injectors to start the car and then the daytime sort of running lights of that halo will be on that's what i want so i want them to be on no matter what then when i turn my headlights on only then will the actual high and low beams come on on the jeep so that's my plan um at some point i may rewire it here into the glove box if i have an issue uh, even if I don't, I may still do it. But just for the purposes of this video, kind of wanted to show you that you can do it here and that you will have power here. Now, however, if you do have another choice here where you do actually have a couple of fuses that they are on whenever the key is on, whenever the accessory is on, go with that. But in my case, this is the only single fuse in here. Uh, it's pretty much the only choice I have. So what I'm going to do is use this fuse tap. What this does is it goes down in, in place of the fuse that's in there. You put the fuse that's in there first, and then you put the fuse that came with it in there a second. So when it comes to the fuses, what do I mean by first? First means that whatever is closest to the pins that are going down into the fuse block. So this is the first one, the top one is the second one. So my original 20 amp fuse, and it, this one should never be more than what you're replacing it with. So I, I shouldn't, if this was a 10, I wouldn't want to put my old 10 in first and then a 20. This is a 20 for the injectors, and I'm going to put that one first, closest to the pins, then the second one. And so again, hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's see if I can do this with one hand. So I've got my 20 amp fuse for the uh, injectors in, and then I'll put the one that came with the kit second. So that's first, that's second. And then you take your fuse, you put it right back in the same spot, and there you go. So what's going to happen is this is going to run out. We're going to connect the red wire that came with the kit into this. And like I said, I'm going to put my black wire on my ground, on the of the negative post. Now, what I want to do is shrink wrap this. That will allow it to seal up and be watertight. This is a half inch wrench so I guess I lied when I said you only need the Torx 15 <laughs> um, it definitely is a good idea to use a drill and maybe some screws to attach the little box that came with it as well um, but pretty much you just don't need to be able to, to have to dive into any wiring tools or anything like that which is usually what happens when you've got one of the other kits that has just exposed wiring. There we go, just need to get this back on and tighten it up. Okay, got my negative on, got my positive on. And we just want to make sure we're not pinching this. Perfect. So as you can see here, 
it's just dropping straight down. It's not getting pinched. And it's got a good strong connection. Let's test it out, see how it looks. All right, first let's check out the headlights. Oh yeah, those are nice and bright. Now, the halos are not on because the car is not on. So let's go ahead and turn the car on and check that out. Okay, there they are, they are red. Let me see if I can unlock it. Green, teal, blue, purple. <laughs> That's awesome. And then you can just do white, which is pretty much how I would do it. But yeah, whenever the engine's on now, the halos are on, I've got daytime on the lights. Okay, so yeah, Super E, that's the kit. I love this because it's got the app, it's got the remote, you can do the colors. Um, again, I would do like all kind of different crazy colors if I were a 12 year old boy, but I am not. Um, so uh, check it out, Super E. This is kind of cool. I didn't even realize this. You could do brighter, even brighter, even brighter. So you can dim it down to as much as you want. You can lock it in once you like a color. And it should stay that color. As you can see, it casts some great light. Let's take a look at the brights. dark yet so it's kind of hard to tell but yeah that looks great even better coverage than I had before so that's gonna do it I got new lights for the Jeep which is really cool I got daytime running lights which I've kind of always wanted and uh, leave me a comment uh, down below if you have any questions uh, or if you want to let me know if I got something wrong. I'm sure uh, more than a few people will have a problem with me attaching a fuse tap to the injectors, but uh, I will update that. But just kind of for now, I wanted to show that it can be done. And if I do have any problems down the road, I'll let you know. I'll do an update on this, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, subscribe if you can. I'm going to be doing a lot more on this Jeep. Uh, I need to actually get in and, and fix, the, or not fix the frame, but I need to sort of get some rust off of it, seal it up, and make sure it's good to go through the winter so that that frame doesn't get any worse. It's something that every Jeep owner needs to do. Thank you very much for tuning in and we will catch you next time.